from what percentage of our brains we use to how to treat a jellyfish sting. Today, we look at 13 lies you still believe. Number 13, 10%. The lie, we only use 10% of our brains. The truth. This couldn't be further from the truth as neurologists have proven that throughout a day, people use close to, if not, the full 100% of their brain capacity. The myth seems to originate from a book by philosopher-psychologist William James called The Energies of Man, which was published in 1907. In the book, William James wrote, We are making use of only a small part of our possible mental and physical resources. This idea over time via the telephone game developed into the 10% lie. While Mr. James' idea might be a good philosophical motivator for self-improvement, we can agree that 1907 wasn't the peak of neurological science. Number 12. Einstein got an F. The lie. Einstein flunked math. The truth? Einstein was actually a math prodigy who mastered differential and integral math before he turned 15, despite not starting school until he was 6 years old. This myth may come from the fact that Einstein failed the entrance exam for Zurich Polytechnical Institute, but this was due to him failing the natural science and language portions of the test. To his credit, the exam was in French, which he hadn't mastered yet. He was only 16, and he was later admitted to the institute which he graduated from. Number 11, pee remedy. The lie, if you're stung by a jellyfish, someone should urinate on the wound. The truth. Not only is this like adding insult to injury, but it actually could worsen the injury. When a jellyfish stings with its tentacles, they attach to the skin. And if you urinate on an attached tentacle, it may cause the jellyfish's stinging cells called nematocytes to swell and shoot more venom into the wound. While pee may soothe the affected area after the tentacles are removed, it has no more effect than warm water would. The proper way to deal with a jellyfish sting is to deactivate the nematocytes and wash the tentacles off with vinegar. You should also use tweezers if you have to grab them off individually. As the commonly recommended method of scraping them off with sand or a credit card could spread the venom as well. Afterwards, applying heat to the area will render the venom inactive. Number 10. Let them eat cake. The lie. Marie Antoinette didn't care about the poor. The truth. Marie Antoinette was actually a consummate philanthropist and showed concern for the poor throughout her life. She also most likely never uttered the words, let them eat cake, as this had been attributed to various aristocrats before her time and only became a part of her legend years after the French Revolution. It is true that she lived on an overly indulgent lifestyle and probably was still displeased by the poor even though she thought she was helping them. No matter how much money she gave, the excessive opulence that her and her husband, King Louis XVI, displayed would have been insulting to those living in unreasonable squalor. So one could see why this myth seemed germane to the icon of the bourgeoisie and was perpetuated for centuries. Number 9. Kitty Cafe The lie that coffee stunts growth in children and teenagers. The truth. Though caffeine can cause tooth decay, sleep disorders, and anxiety, there is no basis in the old wives' tale that coffee stunts the growth process. This myth originated from outdated studies that linked caffeine to osteoporosis and diminished bone mass. These results may have had nothing to do with the caffeine altogether, as the subjects of the study all had diets that were calcium deficient and were elderly. So just like many of these lies, this one can be traced back to paranoid parents jumping to conclusions, selectively choosing facts and word-of-mouth information corrosion. Number 8. Edison's Invention The lie. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. The truth? Though Edison was the first to produce a light bulb that could easily be mass-produced, the electric light was actually invented 70 years before Edison did this. A British scientist named Humphrey Davy invented the rudimentary arc lamp in 1806, which was the first device to use electricity to create light. Then, in 1841, another Englishman, Frederick de Molins, first patented an incandescent lamp that used a filament. Even the incandescent carbon filament bulb, which is commonly associated with Edison, was first created by yet another Brit named Joseph Swan a year before Edison's commercially viable model. However, the bulb that Edison created was the first that could last for more than a few hours and is the model that became the basis for all modern light bulbs. Though he did have over a thousand patents, there are many other inventions that are commonly credited to Edison that he didn't invent, such as the storage battery, the record player, wax paper, 
the telegraph, the fluoroscope, the movie camera, and the electric chair. Another misconception is that Edison created his inventions on his own when in fact he had a laboratory that employed dozens of workers that tested and came up with the inventions that he would take credit for. Number seven, sleepwalker scare. The lie. If you wake a person while they're sleepwalking, you could give them a heart attack, stroke, or other sudden trauma due to fear. The truth. There is some danger in waking a sleepwalker, but not from being scared to death. Most of the danger involves the disorientation of the person waking in mid-activity. They might suddenly run into something, accidentally harm themselves, or become violent. There are many cases of people trying to wake sleepwalkers and end up being attacked by them because of confusion. Most of the time, it's best to try to lead the person back to bed without waking them. However, sometimes it's necessary to wake a sleepwalker as physical injury can result from the sleepwalker running into objects or trying to do unsafe activities while mostly unconscious. This is contrary to another myth that people can't hurt themselves while sleepwalking. If you have to wake a sleepwalker, it's best to try to be as soothing as possible and maintain your distance. Though this can be difficult as sleepwalkers are usually in such a deep state of sleep that it can feel impossible getting them to wake up. Number six, horned helms. The lie, the Vikings had horns on their helmets. The truth, archeologists have never found a helmet with horns that could be attributed to or dated to the time of the Vikings. As a matter of fact, archaeologists have only ever found one helmet that once belonged to a Viking, and it lacked the cliched cusped adornments. The image of Vikings with horned helmets is a product of creative license, combined with the practices of ancient cultures that came long before the Vikings. Historians have linked this portrayal to the paintings of the 19th century Scandinavian paintings, as well as Richard Wagner's operas based on Norse mythology, in which the actors wore horned helmets. These artists most likely drew inspiration from ancient Greek and Roman playwrights and authors who depicted the Germanic and Norse tribes of Northern Europe as wearing helmets that featured antlers, wings, and horns. The tribes that these stories chronicle would have lived hundreds of years before the age of the Vikings. But we can all agree that the mascot of the Minnesota Vikings would be much less intimidating without the iconic horns. Number five, swallow your gum. The lie. If you swallow your gum, it will take years to digest. The truth, chewing gum is difficult to digest, but it usually passes through the digestive system within a few days. It's still not recommended that you should swallow gum as the ingredients used are extremely difficult for stomach acid to break down and cause constipation. The gum usually is forced out of the body by other consumed foods and liquids. However, if it's regularly swallowed, it can cause serious problems. One young boy who chewed and swallowed an average of six pieces a day suffered from extreme constipation for two years before doctors had to go in and remove the large wad of gum stuck in his large intestine. A one and a half year old girl who constantly ate her gum had also swallowed several coins which stuck to the gum inside of her stomach which became lodged in her esophagus. Luckily, the doctors were able to remove the dangerous conglomerate, but it could have been much worse. Number four, scoot back. The lie, sitting too close to the TV can damage your eyes. The truth, this causes no long-term damage. Parents may find their children sitting closer to their television because it's easier for children to focus on objects when they're closer. Sitting too close for too long can cause eye strain or may be a sign of someone being nearsighted. But overall, it will not harm the eyes. However, sitting too close to the TV was dangerous when the practice of telling children to scoot back became ingrained in parenting culture. Up until the 1950s, television sets put out small, unshielded levels of radiation, which could damage the eyes if someone were to sit close habitually. Television manufacturers eventually developed models that blocked any sort of harmful rays from being emitted to unsafe degrees. In addition, the LCDs and plasma televisions that are becoming more and more commonplace today don't put out any radiation at all. Number three, food cramps. The lie, you should wait 30 minutes before you swim after eating. The truth. The increased danger of getting a cramp from swimming directly after eating is negligible compared to the odds of getting a cramp in any other situation. Modern science has shown that there is no data to link drowning scares or deaths to full stomachs. While there is information that supports a slight increase in cramping when doing any physical activity on a full stomach, the added risk is so minuscule that no one should be worried about swimming after eating. In addition, the increase is mainly seen in incidents where the people ate excessive amounts of food before participating in physical activities. In fact, eating on an empty stomach can increase cramps by the same slim margin as well. 
There are even certain foods such as those high in potassium that can reduce a person's chances of cramping up. So why have parents been telling their children this for over 100 years? The source of this myth is the 1908 edition of a book called Scouting for Boys, which states, if you bathe within an hour and a half after taking a meal, you are very likely to get a cramp. Whether the author, Robert Baden-Powell, was relying on some coincidental personal experience, anecdotal evidence, or just being a lazy fearmonger, we'll never know. As it is a scouting guide, it might have been meant to suggest swimming in natural bodies of water after eating could be dangerous due to the body being sluggish directly after a meal. But if you want to eat a cheeseburger while wading in the calm waters of a pool, go for it. Just be sure to chew. Number two, spider snack. The lie, when you sleep, you eat X numbers of spiders a night, a month, or a year. The truth, over a person's lifetime, the realistic number of spiders a person eats while they sleep is between zero and one. It is more likely that you will accidentally eat one while awake than for a spider to crawl into your slumbering mouth. Spiders are extremely sensitive to vibrations and use them to detect predators. And though it's asleep, the human body is a hotbed for vibrations that would scare spiders off. Whether or not you snore, a nearby spider can feel everything from a person's breath to their heartbeat and would try to stay away. There are a few reasons this is extremely rare. A, most spiders don't have a death wish and their instincts would probably stop them if they got close to a warm, loud human mouth. B, though possible, it's unlikely that anyone would sleep through a spider wandering about on their face. C, it's highly irregular for a person to arbitrarily swallow while sleeping, unless they're dreaming of eating a cheeseburger in the pool. So where did this idea come from? It started as a small misguided notion in folklore and was perpetuated by internet hoaxers in the early days of email who were purposely trying to trick as many gullible people as they could. They definitely succeeded in that and probably caused several cases of insomnia and arachnophobia along the way. Number one, three seconds. The lie, goldfish only have a three second memory. The truth, they can remember things almost five months in the past, as can most species of fish. Recent studies have proven that fish actually have a much higher capacity for memory than once thought and can even be taught via classical conditioning methods, most notably through sound. This myth probably originated as a way for people to cope with the guilt of keeping their pet fish in small bowls or tanks. 